Hello and welcome. My name is Drew Shark. I am the CTO and co-founder of Matter and Form. We're going to scan today with the three and just look at how you would scan something a little bit larger, like a medium-sized object. Uh, in this case, what we're scanning is the air intake tube on a, I think it's a 2003 Mustang, and I'm not a car aficionado, so if you want to correct me, go for it. I'd love to know what I'm saying wrong here, but uh, this air intake seemed like a really interesting shape for me. I get a lot of people asking to scan car parts for either custom parts, replacement parts, or for fitting so that they can actually put it into CAD and look at how your part uh, or, or your new section might fit within the existing um, setup. So that's what I thought we'd show today. The parts are black, albeit they're, they're, they're quite dusty, um, but they are black. I am not using any sort of scanning spray. I am in a uh, really normal garage with, um, actually I have windows in my garage, so maybe it's not super normal, but um, yep, yeah, it's just basic lighting uh, inside the garage. And uh, of course I have a fairly decent tripod. That's the one thing here that I think might come into to, um, handy if you're gonna be setting up for something like this. It has a sliding arm so I can really get into some of the positions. You don't need this, you can do your own um, set up with another tripod, but um, there we go. Okay, so this is me just setting up. Uh, I was having a little bit of trouble at the beginning, uh, but there we go, we're all set up. And once the settings are set for your scan, you really don't need to change them that much for something like this. All I'm doing is changing the position of the scanner in order to get in and out of all the nooks and crannies. And um, I'm running on Wi-Fi, um, so I'm not hooked up to ethernet. The iPad's on Wi-Fi, the scanner's on Wi-Fi, and yeah, it's just a normal iPad 5th um, gen that I'm using. Um, we are, this is an alpha unit, uh, so the software is an alpha. There's actually one crash in this video, um, but uh, so we'll, we'll you know, give a little bit of a break here because we're just pre-launch, but this is just an example. Um, right, so the whole scan time here was about uh, 30 minutes. Um, didn't take a ton of time. Um, and we'll look at post-processing the scans as well afterwards. Right now I am just looking at getting the scanner back up from the crash, which doesn't take long, it just needs a reboot. Um, and then uh, I did film this as a time-lapse, as an 8x time-lapse, um, but I wanted to show you guys what, what it would actually look like in real time. So. You know, it's not the smoothest video, but this is this is real time or as close as I could get real time to try to um, show you you know how long these scans actually take. They're they're very very quick, and the processing uh, you know it's all on board, so it's going to be the same no matter what device you use. Is about you know 10, 10 seconds, fifteen seconds, uh, depending on your settings. So right. I am in a very tiny garage. This garage is not great for moving around. If you have a bigger space, this would be much better. Uh, you could also scan, you know, later in the evening or even at night uh, if, you, if you wanted. It's not going to work in direct sunlight, but you're going to be okay if, uh, if it's evening time or, or at nighttime. The iPod makes things really easy, um, mostly just because you have that screen available and you can just pick it up and move it around. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what device you've got. A phone is a little bit small, I find. Um, although you can do it, it, it's not the greatest experience right now. We're going to be working on that for uh, a future update. But a tablet is, I, I actually really like scanning with a tablet. It's, it's fantastic. So I think I'm just looking at the scans right now just to see, make sure that I've got enough coverage. Um, I can always come back and scan more, but I want to make sure that everything is looking good and I've got the right settings. This is a bit of a mistake I made right there. I, I didn't have quite enough overlap between our scans, um, but as you'll see, we can totally fix that in the post-processing without any problems. This air intake is about, uh, it's about half a meter wide. And that's it, there we go, uh, all done. So we jump into the software afterwards, and right away what I'm gonna do, I, I've skipped a little bit at the beginning here. Um, there was about 13, 15 scans, uh, I think, 13 scans. 
So I've aligned the first three. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one by one and align them to make sure that they're they're um, aligning properly. And for the most part, this is very simple. You select the two, you select your base group that you want to align to, and then the scan that you want to align, uh, and you hit auto. And auto does a great job. 80%, 90% of the time, it aligns things really, really well. Um, you know, uh, it doesn't really matter whether you're uh, ha you know, usually overlap, it, it can handle almost any type of overlap. In this case though, it didn't work. Um, so I wanted to show in real time now what, what this would actually look like. So these, these two scans uh, did, not, did not align. I, I actually, they should. They had a lot, quite a bit of overlap, but they didn't. So instead I'm gonna use the um, point picking, which is a you know, human helped uh, alignment procedure. It's very easy. Uh, it doesn't take really that much more time. But essentially what you need to do is pick points that are the same on both objects to give the machine some idea of how things should align. And then uh, it's going to refine that alignment for you afterwards. So you don't need to be perfectly accurate like, and be really particular. That's why we made the, these numbers like quite large. Um, you know, rough is okay, especially on an object like this. And uh, we need about, we, mathematically you only need three, but we require four to make sure that it, you're getting an, a, a robust enough fit. Um, so you pick four points on both sides and you'll be able to uh, refine them after that. Now this is alpha software, we don't have any uh, spinner or progress bar um, for the processing. So when I click align here or refine here, it's actually processing right now, it's not showing you, um, but it is, it is processing. When the done button beside uh, the refine button it lights up. That's that's it. It's it's finished aligning, and this is in uh, this is in real time here. So it, it only takes a, a few seconds to to do that. There you go. It's all finished. Um, and then for some reason I delay pressing done. But once you press done, your scans are aligned, and there we go. Nice fitting, and you can see the nice blending of the the, the colors between the two scans. I continue to just sort of add them to the group. As I add them to the group, the, the whole group, it becomes my, um, my my sort of base that I align to. And it gives more information for additional scans to be added to. So your first scans that you align, you really want to pick ones that have sort of the most overlapping uh, content. And then you can, you can go down from there. Although I did come into a layer here, here's that mistake I was talking about. I have very little overlap. Like, no overlap. So I actually had to switch it out and use a different scan to align first. That sort of was a transition scan. And then now this one can be aligned. Um, but you can see how little alignment, uh, how little overlap there is. And it's all complete. So um, there we go. Thanks for watching the video and uh, we'll hopefully see you next time.